I didn't expect to make a, another video so soon, but I was just writing a blog post. And when I finished the blog post, I read a reply to yesterday's blog post by Victor. And ironically, he was saying what I was saying in my blog post, and I didn't realise that. Um, but it was sparked, the idea that came to me to write the blog post was sparked when I was out for a walk. And then I said on the photography show video about the age of the people coming into the photography show. Well, I don't know. I, I'm guessing four or five years ago now, maybe a bit longer. I sat down with a group from a magazine, a well-known magazine in the UK. And we it was like a little working party, a working group. And through Photoholics and Fujiholics, it's something else I try to do. And that's introduce younger, new people into photography. Because the actual age group of photographers is dying out. That is an actual fact. If you go to the photography show and you stand there on the first day and you see the age group that comes through the door, if you see the age group that buys photographic magazines, if you see the age group of most photographers, they're dying out. What percentage of those are great? Very few. What percentage of those are amazing? Even fewer. You've got the Don McCullens and Tom Stoddards of this world in photojournalism. Tom was a friend of mine. He sadly died a few years ago. He kept his illness quiet, even from his closest friends. But Tom, to me, is amazing. So he used to do talks, photographic exhibitions and everything extremely cheaply. And one of the main reasons he did that is because of his love of photography and his love of teaching. He helped and taught and helped and taught and mentored, I suppose you could say, a friend of mine, Matt Walkley, with his um, darkroom stuff. Obviously, Matt's very good at it anyway, but Tom gave him a few hints and tips and even some of his images to work with. And that's an amazing thing for the guy to do. And right till the end, he was helping people all the time, helping people and encouraging people. And he probably found out the same as I did through this process, that most people couldn't give a shit and they weren't interested. In all the years I taught photography, very few people, and I can count them on both hands almost, and I count some of them as friends, have ever listened to anything I've had to say and ever went on to produce great images and great work. Claire Armitage has gone on to produce loads of stuff and they, I, I, I mentioned other names, Sam and a few of my friends, Michael, they all produce great images. And I'm not saying they listen to me, but they go out and photography is a craft. It's something you learn, at possibly a young age, you learn how to use a camera. So you become a camera owner and then you learn how to use that camera. And that's not a five minute task. And then you have to learn how to use the exposure triangle. And then you learn the craft of photography. Then you learn how to create an image, um, look at what you're doing, um, study photography, study the masters, study everything about light, study every single thing and every aspect of photography. You know, you can go to university, you can go and do whatever you want in the way of a degree in photography, or you can teach yourself. The thing about it is, it's a bit like learning a craft. It doesn't happen overnight. You can't become a great wood turner in a day. You can't become a great chef in a day. You can't become anything great in a day. It's a long process of learning. To become a Michelin star chef takes years. You don't just get a load of saucepans and suddenly become a chef. I've talked about this before in the Dunning-Kruger effect, but this is really important. And a lot of the photography, um, social media, over the last sort of 10 years has been new people coming onto the scene that are lazy. And I'm telling you, they're fucking lazy. They cannot be bothered. Some of them have come on workshops with me so that I can create a photograph for them so they can go away and take it home to their photography, whatever it is, and put a photograph in an exhibition so they can try and win it. There's nothing in learning. that. There's no learning process in that at all. It's just bloody lazy. So what we've gained is a load of lazy people that like photography as a fad for five minutes. Those people go online and they try and change the narrative in photography. They try and change the narrative because they want photography to be how they want it to be so they can control the narrative. If that then happens, you sort of suppress the real good photographers and then along comes TikTok and Instagram and everything else where everyone's dancing around and taking shit photographs and trying to pretend it's real. What's now enabling those people that are lazy is AI. Except you go online and all the AI is the same. 
It's too perfect. It's too, you know, you can probably put in, I don't know, I've never done it, but you could probably put in six people sitting on a wall with a lovely background, and then suddenly this AI will create this image for you. But all these people are perfect, sitting on a perfect wall with perfect light, with perfect this. It's no skill at all in it. So over the time, technology is enabling the people that need enabling to create digital art. This happened with Photoshop quite a while back. There is nothing wrong with Photoshop and Lightroom or whatever you want to use. I just use my apps these days that are easy to use. There's nothing wrong with changing things digitally. And that's quite funny because the recent thing with the royal photograph doesn't matter what anyone thinks of that. Who gives a shit, right? Everyone's got more important things to do in their lives than worry about one bloody photograph. But the interesting thing is, is the furore it's created and it's brought to my mind what's going on at the moment. And that is, photography is dying. It's dying with my age group and the people around about my age group. And as we all die out, photography as you know it will sort of start to disappear. And in a way, that's a really, really good thing because Photoshop and AI is gonna create a new breed of photographers. That breed of photographers, what I call lazy bastards, right? They haven't got time to learn the skills of photography. They haven't got time to learn the exposure triangle. They buy half of their bloody photographs or take them off from online and then use them as digital art and pretend they've done them. You know, photojournalism and the lost art of photojournalism, if you want to call it, is dying out. You can't go to war zones anymore without getting shot because if you go to a war zone these days, the people that want to control the narrative will shoot the journalists. So the likes of Tom Stoddard and everyone else can't do that. So, I mean, obviously Tom's tired, so he can't anyway. But Don McCullum, etc., and all the photographers, great war photographers of the past, can't go. Would we all be shocked at these days? So where am I going with this? The young people of today that would take the time to learn the skill and art of using a camera, to learn the skill and art of creating a, an image in whatever form that is, from a studio to photojournalism, to anything else from landscape to street photography. The person that takes the time to study the masters, learn the craft, learn how it's supposed to be done, not cheat and pretend that their form of street photography is the one that everyone needs to be doing for TikTok because that's just bollocks, right? A lot of the street photographers these days aren't even street photographers. Everything they do is done in Photoshop afterwards. People have moved, fences have moved, the lights changed. That's not photography. Now you want to call it digital art, you want to call it photography, that's up to you. The truth is it's not, it's cheating. There's learning the craft, waiting for that moment, waiting for the exposure, waiting for the great light, getting it perfect. And that gives you an immense feeling of when you capture that image, you think, oh, that's really, really good. I'm really, really glad I got that that day. The more time you spend with a camera in the hand, you better you get. And that's a true fact. The more time you do in the trenches, as I think David Notton or someone said, the more you're gonna learn. Photography is a lifetime of learning and I'm still learning. Cheating with AI and everything else and the TikToks and all this, it doesn't work, it's not photography. The beauty of this is though, the cheaters are gonna now find it a lot easier to cheat with AI and digital photography because it's getting better and better and better. That means the young people coming behind, the odd one or two or three, are gonna come up through the ranks and suddenly have amazing work in the future. When I started out, they always said that amazing photographers would rise to the top. The cream would rise to the top. They did. You will know the names of the most amazing photographers in the world because they stand the test of time. Some come and go. You never hear of them again in five minutes. There's loads of people on social media that come and go. They're famous for five minutes and then they've gone again. But the likes of Don McCullum, Ansel Adams, the big names in photography from landscape to street to whatever, Vivian Mayer, et cetera, et cetera, who never really had much of an audience at all when she was alive. You know, these people you will remember for the rest of the time. And also their images are timeless, right? If she was around today and she created stuff in AI, she'd be a five minute wonder. So the good thing is photography as we know it is dying out over the next 20, 30 years. It's dying out of my age group. When my age group and just maybe 10 years below me die, there won't be many of us about. But if the young people of today start learning photography properly, they will be the stars of the future. They will get into projects. They will get into their photography in such a big way that it will make them want to go out and explore, explore photojournalism, become real good photojournalists. This day and age, the whole of the media is clickbait bollocks to get you to look at adverts. And people will get sick of it. 
you know, the great big snow venom snowstorms that are coming to all of the UK in five minutes make, to make you look at the app, to look at the advert. It's all bollocks, it's all gonna go. Everyone's getting bored with it. Venomous snow, big crash coming to the M25, what the Royals are doing. It's all a load of shit just to get you to look. The point of fact is the old photojournalism, you know, the napalm girl and photographs like that, the impact they give you as a genuine photograph are so important. And they will come back in the future, I think, because the AI and all the TikTok and all the Instagram stuff that everyone's just doing and copying with the same feeds, the same light, the same person standing in the same corner and the same shadow is getting boring. You see it every day. But everyone clicks and likes it because they think it's all about photography. It's not. And those people are creating a complete mess of it all. The good thing is, I think things are changing. Photography is dying out. If you start learning now, the cream will rise to the top and I can't wait to see it. See you on the next video.